What a privilege we have with the sardine run that happens in South Africa over the winter months in KwaZulu-Natal. And not every day is what some people refer to as a sardine jackpot, but a lot of planning, strategic approach and preparation goes into finding a shoal that's netable and finally getting a net around it. Now what makes the sardine run so special for us? A lot of game fish and sharks as well as skates follow the sardines as it forms a big part of their diet. And when the netting happens, some of the sardines get squashed and form a bit of a chum in that particular area or bay, allowing some of that game fish or sharks to move in close enough for you to target them. Now over the last couple of years, it's been evident if you do have access to a drone that you've got a lot more days to be able to target them. Should the sardines be 200 meters and more away from the shore, you can still get a bait in the midst of things. Whereas for the casting anglers, only a few days every season allows them to put a bait in front of some sharks or game fish for that matter. In some areas, the shoals will come close enough to points so that some of the spinning anglers can target the game fish. Yeah, morning guys, we're down here at Hibidin, uh, splash rock or spray rock and as you can see a nice big shoal of sardine moving slowly north. We've been watching that fish from Pumula this morning, we've been on the water. I just got out uh, to come up in the viewpoint to have a look at it. Moving very slow north and the only place you can net it now is Hibidin. So that's about a K down the beach. We'll have to sit and wait for it. This morning there was two nets at Uvongo. So there was some fish up there but as you can see those shoals have got shark activity and game fish in it a lot of chases in those shoals so let's wait and see hopefully we get a shot in the next hour or so best part of the sardine run consists of driving up and down looking for shoals and waiting for them to line up in the right areas to be able to net them only a few selected areas allows the netters to put a net around them <laughs> Team V's and Moonlight is committed to stick to the rules of releasing all bycatch. As we saw several days over the sardine run, having netted some tuna, garrick and other game fish. Over the last four years, we have witnessed how drone fishing has improved and the absolute go-to method for targeting these bigger fish as the landing ratio is a lot more successful as opposed to casting for them and can almost be summarized to a landing ratio of at least 8 out of 10 using drone gear compared to the maybe 2 out of 10 when casting. By using a drone it allows the anglers to spread out more as well as the use of very heavy tackle that betters your chance of landing the fish. On the occasions where the sharks move close enough for the casting anglers to target them, it is quite condensed. And you have several challenges of other anglers on top of each other, as well as sharks and game fish swimming around the shoal that could very easily allow you to lose your fish. In short, I think drone fishing has added a lot when it comes to successfully landing big sharks. For us as shore anglers, we keep a close eye on the netting 
to find the fish. But especially one of those days where one of those nets might open, allowing thousands of sardines to wash into certain bays, resulting in several fish being caught there over the next day or two. The netters are quick on trying to salvage as much as possible, but it only takes a few hundred little fish to squash into the bay and the game is on. day, many of the local community were able to help themselves to sardines as well, as an excess of 300 crates got spilled. Alright guys, down here at Sharks Bay, Kumula. 120 minutes now, I encountered some problems with my reel. Where when I was, and I had the guys pull my reel, they spooled the bait on too loose. So I formed a loop and I had to stop this fish, get in its tracks, and uh, get a bit of line back. Cash is there, landing his fish now. Nice graze. Three drops, three pulls. The first one we missed, the second two we got. He's a fish. Yeah. The following morning, Kumaran and Kesh was early on the beach. Getting out as all those salts from the previous day that washed into this bay sucked out at Sharks Bay to the back. This being an obvious good spot to target some of those bigger sharks. And true that, from the first drop they were into big fish. I arrived just in time to assist in landing Kumaran's fish. about this bank. It's a shallow, shallow, shallow bank. It's a wading bank. To get this fish over is a problem. I got HMP 100 pound here. The maxima one mil. So I can feel the, the braid on the on the sand. So far it's holding up perfect. I pray I get this fish out but Sharks Bay has got a few scattered rocks and it's important to know where they are to ensure a safe landing of your fish. We do our best to prevent the loss of a fish like being cut off and it's also advised for most drone anglers to get away from the crowds and ensure the safe landing of these bigger beautiful specimens. Fighting these monsters takes patience. Gaining centimeters at a time, Kumaran did a superb job as he had a problem of fluffed braid on the inside of his reel, only allowing him to use half his capacity and he had to lock up his drag to maximum to prevent this fish taking him further down into his braid. Well what happened on this fish was spectacular when grabbing some of these wind on leaders on the braided part will make it part and that's exactly what happened but Ketch managed to get hold of the leader in time and we all jumped in and leaded this fish.
Straight off to Comoran's fish, myself and Jock got our baits out. I dropped mine just on 300 meters and it wasn't long and the tension was high. It's not long after I went tight that Jock went tight as well. It's absolute tremendous amount of pressure we put on these fish to keep them gliding sideways and every now and then gain a bit of line. It wasn't long and Kesh was on again after losing his fish earlier on the lip. Unfortunately for Kish, the steel broke as he got the fish on the side, so I couldn't take photos as it was a quick release. Unfortunately for Kish, the steel broke as he got the fish on the side, so I couldn't take photos as it was a quick release. Unfortunately, Jock's fish managed to get around the rocks on the left. We had to fight this rip current with almost every fish we hooked, as they are intelligent enough to use those rips. I managed to keep mine close enough to literally bump its nose and turn away. Unfortunately, Jock's was still a bit far out and cut him off close to the leader. We had the bell point today. Got a massive fish on ya. Um, been battling to get bites a couple of days. Managed to get a couple good fish. But I'm onto a strong fish here. Took away of a speed. There's about three greys that's been landed here already. 200 plus kilo fish. I think I've got one of that oak is on here as well. So we'll take it and take where, see where it takes us. But we'll land it soon. Quibi van Staden from All Out Angling also joined in on the action and fought this dusky whaler on a grinder. Spooled with a hundred pound braid, Kobe made short work of it in being able to get this fish landed in under an hour. Just tipping the 200 kilo mark, a great achievement on the grinder setup. All in all, a majestical day witnessing Kwibi's fish of well over 400 pounds, my dusky whaler in excess of 500 pounds, and Kumaran with a staggering fish of well over 600 pounds. And to round off this beautiful morning, and short after Kwibi, Philip also got stuck into a nice fish that turned out to be a Zambezi shark, or a bull shark, as some might refer to it, also common with the sardines. What a perfect day in the sardine run, well rounded off, and we were looking forward to the next morning as we could only do a morning session before Jock has to fly back to Cape Town.
Unfortunately, this morning didn't produce any shark bites. But Philip was rewarded with a fantastic prodigal son, or cobia as some refer to it, just before they had to return home. Now guys, this is really special times in the sardine run, but I want to request everybody to fish responsible and make sure you use the right gear to successfully land this fish. Also the consideration of moving away from the crowds before you hook one of these bigger fish. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification button if you want to be notified every time we upload a video. Also like this video as that really helps us.